Dr. Dave here to cover everything you need to know about hangers where the object ball is in the jaws of the pocket. A pocket hanger is potentially very powerful since it can be pocketed very easily from anywhere in the table. It can serve as a good insurance ball when you need it in your runout, for example after a breakout. It can allow you to get shape anywhere in the table for your next shot if you have good judgment and well-practiced skills. And it can block the pocket. In fact, sometimes it can be useful to create a hanger when you don't have a shot, especially if it creates a problem for your opponent. I wouldn't want to be solids here. However, things can also go wrong with a hanger. If you hit the ball too full, you can scratch, even at slow speed. You can also scratch if you don't use enough backspin or speed with a full hit. You can also misjudge the cut, speed, or angle needed to get shape for the next shot. If you hit the ball too full, much of the cue ball speed will be lost. And if you hit the ball too thin, the cue ball will come out too hot. The cue ball can hit a point of the pocket, resulting in bad shape for the next shot. And the cue ball can stall with topspin, giving you bad shape for the next shot. Fortunately, there are ways to prevent all of these bad things from happening. First, let's look at different ways to prevent a possible scratch. The simplest option is to just cut the ball a little. In other words, don't hit it square. You need to exercise special care when the ball is deep in the pocket, where you can easily scratch off the point and facing. It is easy to avoid the scratch here just by hitting the other side of the ball. You can also shoot off the adjacent rail first. But again, you need to be careful if the ball is deep in the pocket where you can easily miss the ball. If you have good stop or draw shot control, a square hit is fine, especially if the cue ball is close. This can also work at larger distance, but it's a little more difficult. If you don't use enough backspin or speed, the cue ball can easily pick up forward roll and follow the hanger into the pocket. Again, a better approach to avoid the scratch here is to just cut the ball to either side or go rail first. Sometimes a square hit combo can take advantage of the tendency of a rolling ball to follow into the pocket, in this case through an opponent hanger. That was a game winning shot to get on the eight ball. Some people think you need backspin on the cue ball to transfer a topspin to the object ball, but that was a stop shot with no backspin at all. Notice how the object ball starts off with stun, but gradually develops full topspin roll before reaching the hanger. With a shorter distance between the object ball and hanger, you need to be careful to not use too much speed, where the object ball will not have enough time to pick up enough forward roll. Softer speed is better here. When the object ball is very close to the hanger, backspin on the cue ball is required to transfer a topspin to the object ball because it doesn't have enough distance to pick it up on its own. Now let's look at hanger cue ball control. Drawing straight back from a hanger is usually not the best choice. It can be difficult to control exact draw direction and distance, but sometimes draw is a good or the only option. Sometimes thinning the ball is a good option. The tangent line direction predicted by the 90 degree rule for a stun shot can be useful. If you don't know what this stuff means, see the link in the video description. Here, I'm visualizing the tangent line direction I need into the end rail to create the desired path to the next shot. Pocket hangers can be cheated into the pocket in many different directions, allowing for a wide range of cue ball control options. I can hit the ball much thinner to get a steeper angle up table. And I can aim much fuller to get a shallower angle into the end cushion. You can also use side spin to change the angle off the cushions, here mostly off the second cushion. Did you see the rebound angle change off the second cushion? In situations like this, where I need to get up table for the 8, some people might be tempted to use outside draw like this. But this type of shot can be difficult to control. It is easy to misjudge the cut angle, speed, and spin amounts. And it is difficult to control the exact cue ball direction. If you instead use a thin hit with inside follow, you can more reliably come off two rails with a much softer stroke that is easier to control. 
Sometimes, you need to be careful to avoid the pocket points when playing position. Here, I plan to take a natural path up table with top right spin, but the pocket point gets in the way. A good option here is to go rail first to avoid the point and easily get up table. If the hanger were more centered and not so deep in the pocket, the natural top right spin cut shot would have worked fine. Now let's look at some very useful cue ball control reference directions for hangers. These are taken from the Video Encyclopedia of Pool Shots video series. When you slow roll the cue ball parallel to a rail with a half ball hit on a hanger, the cue ball typically heads along the diagonal away from the pocket toward the opposite side. And when you shoot along the diagonal at 45 degrees, the cue ball heads roughly along the rail. The exact action of these shots will vary some with conditions, but they are fairly reliable. On this table, shooting from a diamond above the side pocket sends the cue ball parallel to the rail. This also works in the other direction, shooting from a diamond below the side. So again, when shooting along a rail, the cue ball heads along the diagonal. And when shooting along a diagonal, the cue ball heads along the rail. VEPS includes many other hanger reference directions. Here are a few more. A slow roll half ball hit from the table center heads to the center of the head rail. And a slow roll quarter ball hit from the table center heads along the rail. A slow roll half ball hit from the head spot heads to the corner. And a slow roll quarter ball hit from the head spot should head back to the head spot. Now let's look at the effects of speed, amount of cut, and side spin on hanger cue ball control. Shot speed has a big effect. Shooting along a rail, the cue ball goes a little long of the diagonal with added speed. And with a lot more speed, the cue ball doesn't even go close to the reference. Shooting from the diagonal, the cue ball goes forward as you add speed. This is because the extra topspin with the faster speed takes effect after rebound. How thin or full you hit the hanger also changes cue ball direction. Shooting along the rail, a thinner hit comes up short of the diagonal. And a thicker hit stalls some and just goes a little long. Shooting along the diagonal, a thinner hit goes into the rail. And a thicker hit really stalls. Side spin effects are mostly as you would expect. A small amount of right spin sends the cue ball a little to the right. And with a lot of spin, you can change the direction a lot. A small amount of left or reverse spin causes stall, surprisingly sending the cue ball a little longer. And with a lot of left, the cue ball still stalls quite a bit, but comes up a little short. With a thin hit, the reverse spin can have a much greater effect. Here, a small amount of right spin sends the cue ball into the rail. And a lot of right spin sends the cue ball more into the rail and makes the cue ball run. A small amount of left spin sends the cue ball away from the rail. And a lot of left pulls it away much more. You should practice all of the reference directions and experiment with all speed, cut, and spin effects so you can be aware of them and be able to use them to your benefit when needed. Now let's look at some game situation examples where hanger cue ball control reference directions are useful. Here, to plan for the 13 ball breakout off the 11 ball hanger, I need to plan to leave the cue ball along the diagonal. The runout is easy from here. With this layout, after the 15, I want the cue ball to be along the rail to break out the cluster along the diagonal. Now, a quarter ball hit on the 13 should send the cue ball back to the foot spot. 
I hit it closer to a half ball hit by mistake, which sent the cue ball closer to the corner, but I still have an easy out. Now I can just cut the 8 for the easy win with no chance for a scratch. The best way to master hang or cue ball control is to practice target drills, where you send the cue ball to different spots on the table from different cue ball directions. Here's an example shooting along the rail. I will pocket the hanger and send the cue ball to each of the target positions shown here. Again, one advantage of a hanger is you can use it to send the cue ball to any spot on the table for the next shot. The target is just an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper with the center cut out. I am using straight stun to get to the first target position. Good action draw slightly inside a half ball hit works well here. Another option is to thin the ball and go two rails across the table, but this shot is very difficult. It is important to practice different routes to the target positions because in game situations, sometimes balls are in the way, forcing you to take alternative paths. Here's another challenging route using stun and reverse spin that takes on the opposite side of the table. Did you see the left spin take on the second cushion? Here, you just need a little extra speed to go wide of the diagonal reference. Bottom right with a half ball hit also works here. Here, slow roll with right spin to go above the diagonal reference is very natural. For this target position, you can use stun. Here, I am visualizing the necessary tangent line direction and the required perpendicular aim. You can also use a half ball hit with maximum drag intensified right spin to send the cue ball well right of the reference diagonal. If you don't know what all of these words mean, see the links in the video description. This shot will work only on fast cloth with cushions that react to spin well. This target position calls for very soft speed with lots of right spin. Here you can thin the ball to come short of the reference diagonal. Here the target is on the diagonal so a slow half ball hit or slightly thinner works perfectly. Now I'm shooting along a diagonal instead. The first two targets are along the reference rail direction so you just need to use a slow roll half ball hit. This one just requires a little more speed. Here you can use spin to alter the reference direction path. Right or running spin goes into the long rail to the target. Left or reverse spin is not as natural here, but it also works. Here I plan to use right spin to go three rails to the target, but I hit the pocket point on the first attempt. If this happens, just move the hanger closer to the point so you can practice the path. You can also go straight to the target with a thinner hit and much more spin. As before, a half ball hit with a little right works well here. The same works here with a little more right. You can also use left instead. Here you can go to the other rail with left spin, which is very natural. The easiest option here is a soft half ball hit with maximum left spin.
I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you want to get really good with hang or cue ball control, you should practice the drills and try other cue ball positions, especially from all of the reference directions covered earlier. And practice with side pocket hangers also. I want to thank Tin Man on AZ Billiards for encouraging me to do this video and for offering some good suggestions. If you want to learn more, the video description has links to many supporting and related videos and resources. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.